Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new T-Motor F40 V2 Pro. And this is the continuation of the F40 line of motors from T-Motor, however there are a lot of design choices in here that really mark this as different from all the other motors, so it's, it's really interesting. So let's get right into it. Just comes in this cool little circular box here. Um, nicely packed in foam, we have the motor and screws, nothing else to it. So for the screws itself, comes in this nice little box, not a Ziploc bag, so it's a one-time use, but that's no big deal. We have four 7mm screws, which is really nice there, because the 6mm ones that usually come with things, um, motors here, um, they're just a little bit too short, they work just fine, but a 7mm screw is a lot less likely to strip, and it'll give you more grip in the base of the motor, so really happy with that. We only do get four, it would be nice to see five, but not a big deal. We have one lock nut there. Again, that would be nice to see too. And then we also do have a spare set screw and little washer there for underneath the motor, which is really nice that they include a spare for that. And then here we have the motor itself. This thing just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, hopefully you can just see. I'm going to flash some pictures up on screen here just so you get some better resolution of these stills than what I'm showing here on video. Hopefully you can just really appreciate, I think personally this is a fantastic looking motor with the colors and the design that they went with. So let's just go through some of the features real quick. Obviously it is a naked bottom design which features a 16 by 16 mounting pattern which is really nice to see them going with naked bottom and 16 by 16. However it is two millimeters thick, hopefully you can see that there. If you compare it to some other motors I have here, these are Brother Hobby Motors, um, you can see their base is 3mm thick. Um, they moved to a 3mm version because um, some of the ones I've had with 2mm, they can, in a hard, really hard crash, if the motor gets, uh, the arm breaks, you can sort of bend these. But it's not really a big issue, but the 3mm is a little bit more durable, but I don't see it being a big issue here, and it does save a little bit of weight. As well as on the bottom, you can see they have the set screw there. Very nice, clean looking with that uh, countersunk screw with the washer there. And I'll take that off in a moment. But if we look up at the top, we have the shaft here. And now this is a hollow all the way through. It's all the way hollow through. Um, titanium shaft, so that's really nice. Don't have anything aluminum there, so you're not going to strip that. And you're pretty not unlikely to um, bend that. And also, if you look at the top of the bell here, hopefully you can see that sort of um, texture on the top. That's really going to help when you tighten your prop down. That's going to grip into it, so it's going to help prevent loose props. And then we have an interesting six spoke design for the top of the bell that's going to help with cooling as well as make it really lightweight. And then you can see just have the engravings on the side here which looks super, super nice of course. So let me take the uh, bell off. This does use a 1.5 millimeter hex screw and it is super nice that this comes out without any issues. Don't have to heat it up. It just comes right out so they're using, let me look actually. Um, yeah, it does look like there's a little bit of Loctite on there, so whatever they're using, it definitely works. And um, taking that out there, it was definitely had some resistance to it, so I highly doubt it's going to come off in flight. So that's really nice set screws that actually do their purpose and don't just strip. So let's just take the bell off and see what we have here. So T-Motor doesn't really go with the standard um, naming system. They have the F40, which is a 2306 size, the F60, which is 2207, and then F20, then they just do name it that way. So the F40 here is a 2306, and measuring it, it does come out to 2306. I already measured it exactly 2306, so that's nice. Um, you can see they did use multi-stranded windings here. Hopefully you can see that. However, these are actually silver windings with a high temperature coating. I'll leave a picture on the screen here that they sent to me. Um, so it's quite interesting. So it does have the the benefits of the silver for greater efficiency, but also the whatever enamel they're using is supposedly help it have higher temperature resistance. And if we take a look at the stator laminations, they are very thin 0.15 millimeters, which is becoming the industry standard. And then we have the four millimeter bearing opening as the shaft is four millimeters all the way through. Well, five up here, four down here, not three, which is nice, so you're not gonna break that. And then if we look at the magnets, they are N52SH arc magnets, and I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like there is a little lip underneath the bell here to help prevent the magnets from slipping, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all with this motor. So let's just put the bell back in there, put the screw back in, get the screw back in all the way tight and then just loosen it up just a little bit everything spins really freely sounds great still nice 
So I'm not sure if you can see it, but up at the top, I'm trying to show the air gap here. It's actually not that super, super close. There is a little bit more um, air gap than on some other similar motors, high-spec motors that I've seen coming out. However, that actually might be a good thing because with a lot of motors nowadays, it's just really, really hard on your battery. So this is going to make it a little bit more efficient while not sacrificing too much power as well as with the silver, in, silver inner windings. Um, that'll make it more efficient, hopefully, too. And of course, this is a 2306-2400 kV motor, so this should be a really, really nice freestyle motor on a heavy pitch prop, which is what I'll be using it for. So one thing that I'm not that happy about is the overall length of the included wires here. So if I just measure them, um, they come out to right around 100 millimeters there, which doesn't sound too bad. When the Emacs RS2306 came out, these came with, I believe, 70 or 80 millimeters here. You can see they're even shorter, and it's just really annoying to have to solder on extra wires to extend them in a lot of applications. However, for my ghost frame, with the flight control stack offset to the back here, if you just take a look in the way I run my wires, if the motor was here um, and running along, it's going to be too short to get up here to the ESC where it would need to be. So I'd really um, like to see 140 millimeters at least um, wires on here because it's a lot easier to just cut off some spare wire than it is to solder on your own. If you take a look at the weight of the motor with the full length of wires, it's coming in at 30.6 grams. So that's really nice uh, weight for a 2306 size motor, especially with a full length of wires there. And also considering a lot of other 2306 designs and T-motor designs in general are a lot heavier at like 34 or 33 grams. So this is really nice lightweight option from them. So yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of the video here. This was just a quick bench overview. No flight or thrust testing in this video. Um, but these will be going on my new main freestyle quad. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know that I actually lost my other one. So this one's going to be pretty important. So I'm really looking forward to testing these. There will be a link down below, hopefully. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the price of these yet. I'd probably say somewhere like $25 um, just going off other T-Motor prices because these aren't out yet. But a big thanks to T-Motor for sending them out to test. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.